As you see in my platform, I had two objectives. One was open up the Northwest Passage. Two was pipelines into Churchill, Manitoba. And there is also talk now of opening up the Ring of Fire in Northern Ontario. That is right up against Hudson Bay. And there are three provinces that border the southern half of Hudson Bay. Obviously, there's Manitoba, Churchill, right about here. There is Northern Ontario, which borders it fairly well, and Quebec as a third. If you zoom in to where the Ring of Fire is, it's right in about this area. One thing that doesn't show on a map very well is how big Ontario is. Now, the northernmost road in Ontario is Highway 11. To get from Capuscasing and Hearst that are about this area down into southern Ontario, you have a bit of a drive in your hands. You've got a thousand kilometers just as a basic shortcut kind of a drive. Hudson Bay, 345 kilometers from Gavis Casing. Now, if we were to go from the Ring of Fire, 378 kilometers, and the reason I'm looking at here is this is Moosonee. It's already got a population there. We can utilize that, we can expand the port a little bit, and it's right here into the mouth of the Moose River, and you can utilize what currently exists. Now, there is, obviously, other ways. You can get into Fort Albany, 250 kilometers. You can go up into Wininsk, 251 kilometers. Why would you send everything south? Even in Port Severn, 362 kilometers. Now, if you were to go direct as the crow flies into southern Ontario, that's 1,100 kilometers. Let's utilize what's up in here. There's a few ways to do that, and the biggest cost is going to be transportation. Now, most of this coming out of here is going to be minerals. When you mine and you're looking for minerals, it only makes sense to send these minerals into Hudson Bay and from there out into the world. Now, rail line seems to make sense at first. It costs a lot to lay down track. Roads are going to be built anyway, so the best way to go at this is trucks, and that's what will be used initially to move that much volume of dirt and minerals. So let's talk about trucks for a little bit. Now, the U.S. max weight truck trailer load is 80,000 pounds. That's about 36,000 kilograms. Now, in Canada, we use kilograms, so let's stick with that. So a basic U.S. truck, the truck itself is 8 ton, the trailer is 8 ton, its empty weight is 16 ton. It's got about 1,200 pounds of torque, and its max weight is 36, that gives it a load of 20 ton. If we come up into Canada, we have a much higher weight limit. Our max weight, the same size truck, a 53 foot trailer and then truck out front, the empty truck will be heavy spec. It weighs about nine ton itself, the trailer will weigh 11 ton, and it will weigh 20 ton empty. Now that's four ton heavier than an empty US truck, but the max weight is 55 and a half ton to give it a 36,000 500 kilogram load weight so we can carry legally a u.s fully loaded truck that truck has about 1500 pounds of torque now let's go a little bigger now we're into the 63,500 kilograms across most of canada some provinces are 62,500 kilograms that's 140,000 pounds that's where you start seeing stuff like this so you're Regular B trains, they've got two trailers, they're not both 53 feet, but they have three axles under the lead trailer, two axles under the rear. It's got 1,800 pounds of torque. Its empty weight is about 22 ton for the truck and two trailers. Max weight, 62,500 kilograms in the lighter provinces, which will give it a max load of 40 ton. We also have the LVCs, two 53 foot trailers, 17, 1800 pounds of torque. So its max load is 40 and a half ton as well. They can't be any heavier because of this maximum truck trailer and load weight, but it can carry 40 ton. On lighter materials and 53 foot van trailers, that works pretty well. Now these trucks would be great up in an area where weight limits aren't going to be the biggest thing, but if you retain nine ton per axle, we have a truck manufactured in Canada with 80,000 pounds of torque to the drives. You can pull as many trailers as you want. It will make it look as easy as absolutely possible. I would instill these things across Canada with three and four trailers behind them. But that truck was built by Edison Motors. The truck itself is 12 ton. And if you were to go 11 ton per trailer, four axles under each one, you could pull as many trailers as you want and just keep ramping up its load. So the empty weight would be 78 ton. Its max weight would be 205 ton and its max load would be 127 ton with five trailers. 
and it can handle significantly more than that if it wanted to. It is a diesel generator running an electric drive system. Incredibly powerful truck. It's made in Canada by Canadian truck drivers and mechanics. And this is one truck that we should utilize as a forefront to handling multiple different ways to move things in the trucking industry in Canada. All we have to do is put that in place and we can open up the ring of fire. We can move goods across Canada much more efficiently. We can change the hours of service in the trucking industry. And I'll get into those in another video because right now there's 70 hours a week with no overtime, no bonus pay. It's just 70 hours a week. And we need to make some significant changes to that because our truck drivers are currently run ragged and they're handling trucks like this just because of a lot of our stuff goes down into the US. There are much better ways to handle that load in Canada and I think Edison Motors is the one that we should back fully to make that happen.